The base of this hose barb is six times thicker than the tank that I intend to weld it to. But I'm not worried about it, because I know the secret of welding thick to thin, which I'm going to share with you. I'm Justin, welcome to Weld Coach. It's Weld Coach, your personal welding instructor, anywhere. Okay, since I'm sure some of you are just looking for the answer in the secret straight away and want to see it done, I'll do you a solid and we'll focus on this first and then we'll get into some practice exercises and things that you can do when you're not faced with this or something you can do to warm up to it, if you will. The secret here is focus. Focusing of the arc, basically letting your eyes tell your hands and your foot what to do in order to control or manipulate that weld pool. As I mentioned, the base of this hose barb is six times thicker than the tank itself that we're welding it to, basically thick to thin. So, as such, you could probably guess that the base of this hose barb can take a lot more amps or sustain a lot more heat or need a lot more heat and amps to get into it versus this very thin tank. And you're absolutely right. So, the secret here is to take the tungsten, which is the source of the arc, and point it or base it more at the actual base of the hose barb than the actual tank itself. What we want to do is establish our pool here and let the pool kind of bleed down into the lower tank. It sounds a lot simpler than it is, but hopefully watching here, you'll kind of get the idea. My torch here is outfitted with a number five cup and the gas flow is set to 15 CFH, measured at the center of the ball on the flow meter. Today I'm using the Sanrex 300 AP. It's a really awesome machine that I've had for years and I absolutely enjoy the crap out of it. I have it set on AC, obviously, to 130 amps, which is probably way overkill for what I need. I, but I like to have that little extra kick in case I need it. So if I'm not getting what I think I need and I can give it a little blast to make it just kind of fall into place and cooperate, that's why I dial it high. It probably doesn't need much more than about 100 amps to get into this little part. My frequency is set to 90 hertz. 90 is just kind of my sweet spot. That's my jam. That's where I like to weld at. You can set it to almost any frequency you want. And since this is a positive reference machine, my balance is set to 33% positive. That's just the sweet spot for this machine or where I feel it works best. Both parts have already been pre-cleaned with some acetone. I don't think I'll need a preheat on it, but the tack weld will tell me if that's true or not. Let's just find out. Okay, so I'm going to start with an out of sight tack weld, if you will. It's going to be relatively small and I'm going to use 1 16th filler. I don't think 1 16th filler is going to carry me through this entire job because I have to use a lot of amps, but we'll find out. You always want to start in an area that is kind of out of sight of uh, the viewer, if you will. I presume that this section is the top of the tank because there's a radiator overflow or there's an overflow cap on the top of it. So this theoretically would have to be the bottom of the tank. So I'm going to make my tack weld out of sight where it's hard to see. So that way if you have any blemishes, mistakes, goofs, anything else like that, it'll be a little bit less visible. Come on. Okay, we're on the, we're on the port. See how it's bleeding over just a little bit? Let's drop some filler in there. Now they're combined. Let's get out of it. That's pretty simple. See if we can kind of keep this in focus. Hopefully it is. We're just going to the opposite side here. So we got a we've got a good build up on the we got a good build up on the base of the barb. See how it's kind of a the heat is just overflowing to the tank. Got our drop of filler. And I guess a drop of tungsten because we all know that adding tungsten to the pool makes it so much stronger. I'm not even going to edit that out. However, I will brush it off. All right, grab me a fresh tungsten. I noticed earlier a moment ago that uh, this was arcing out on the table, so we're just going to have to put the ground clamp directly onto it. And I do have myself a couple of hand props here. Now, these are just aluminum blocks. It should help me get a more stable hand. I don't know if you noticed, I was just a little bit shaky and I want to be as comfortable as possible when I go to weld this. We're going to start in this section here on the bottom of the tank and we're going to go as far as we can until we stop. It's probably going to be only like three or four dabs maybe, but we'll see. Let's just see what happens. This first pass down on the bottom, I'm just going to see if the 1 16th filler is going to be good enough. I don't know yet, but the first few dabs here will tell me if uh, if I need to maybe up it to 332nd or so, but we'll see. My biggest worry here is that since I'm using 4043 filler, 
Oh dear, some of that powder coat's mixing in. Since I'm using 4043 filler, it has more silicon content in it. And if you overheat it, it starts to look like it has leprosy. You get little bubbles on it, little heat bubbles, which is exactly what I'm seeing. So we're going to use 332nd filler for a greater deposition rate, theoretically less heat into the part. And that's why you start with stuff out of sight, like the powder coat that was mixing in there. We'll, we'll boil all of that out when we get to it. In fact, I'll try to clean some of that powder coat out of there now, so that way when I get around to it, it's not going to look as crappy. Okay, 332nd filler, let's give this a shot. See how it goes. So I start just ahead of my last dab. As soon as I get my pool established, I'm going to back up into it, try to tie in. There we go. See how my arc is focused more on the actual barb? It's about as far as I can go right there. That looks a little bit better. So we'll rotate the part, do it again. Part is a little bit wobbly, as is my hand. But you know, we'll work with it, we'll work with it. Get a nice tie in, and off we go. That's about as far as I can get there. Once again, we'll just rotate, find ourselves another semi-comfy spot. Do it again. In case you're hearing a lot of excess noise, music, or helicopters in the background, it's because uh, my shop is literally located like right across the street from the stadium where the big sports ball game is happening. It's noisy. Hopefully my microphone is good enough to filter some of that stuff out. All right, here we go. Tying in. And moving right on through. Again, look at where my focus of my arc is. It's mostly on the barb, and there we go, dipping again. You know, I think sometimes it's just because I talk in all of these videos that it's kind of distracting. Or maybe it's because I haven't welded in a little while. It's probably the latter. Now, one of the best ways you can get better is to practice, but if you need some help practicing, you can always book a class with a coach online at weldcoach.com. It's a live class, not a pre-recorded class or anything like that. You can get some feedback from your coach, get tips, get tricks, get all kinds of information about welding. All you gotta do is tell us what you wanna know. We'll go from there. Okay, final round. Cool established. Tie it in. Let's go. So my goal here is to completely tie this in and finish up, but if I land like a dab short or something, which I'm not, I, I, would, I would have cut bait. So we'll tie this in here, slowly taper out, see if we can get ditch that dimple, back off. There we go. Ta-da. Now for like an additional entry here, I'm going to weld this seam back up. The only thing I don't like about it is the welds all went in this direction. And I'm only gonna weld from here up to there, so the tie into that is gonna look pretty unsightly. And I don't really wanna start here and then go the opposite direction because I think that looks a lot worse, but hey, whatever. We'll, uh, we're just gonna make sure that when the customer ground all that down, uh, that he didn't weaken the side of the tank. So just a quick bead to dibble dab that back up there and this job is done. I'm sure a couple of my astute viewers will uh, happily call out the fact that I'm gonna weld through some of this powder coat and you're probably gonna see that, but it's okay, I can take the criticism. I'm a big kid. I'll be all right. So will the tank. Why? Because it's gonna be recoated and all it really needs to be is watertight. Oh, you know what? I don't need 130 amps to do this. I probably only need about 70. 74. That's probably going to be the magic number. Okay, I can swing that, no problem. Let's light this sucker up and see what it gives us. You get any little surprises or something like that? I just don't know. The hard part about Doing a re-weld is matching somebody else's style. Ah, you see there it's splitting open on me. Let's focus that arc up there. The hardest part about doing a re-weld is 
like I mentioned, matching somebody else's style. Because my style of my stack and how I run my beads and stuff is a little bit different than, say, other people do. I think that tied in pretty well. It looks similar-ish. The point where I terminated, you probably saw the uh, powder coat blasting out through there. It does look like a tiny little blemish, but it's all right. It's going to be coated back up anyway. I think I matched it pretty close, though. Not too bad. I think I'm going to give a little bit more love to this corner here. I just want to blast and blend that in just a little bit more to make sure that that corner is not a problem. I know that there's just a little bit of powder coat in there. So we're just going to have to deal with it because you can't actually get the powder coat out. <laughs> so we're just going to burn it a little bit, kind of round it over. And in that action there, we're actually boiling out the powder coat and kind of blending the rest of the metal in just to make sure it's all good. I'm going to put a little drop here just to, just to make sure. And on that note, sometimes you just don't have any control over it. You know, if there's powder coat in the part and you got to hit it, then you got to hit it. You just have to assess the situation and say, okay, I know it's going to be there, but is it detrimental to the weld or not? If the answer is yes, then you probably shouldn't do it. If the answer is no, then yeah, go for it. You're going to be in situations like this, especially in the automotive performance fabrication industry or weld repairs. Okay, so when I shot that video last week, it was kind of noisy and stuff in here, and I even had one camera die halfway through, but the part's done, it's watertight, everything's sealed up. Could it have looked a little bit better? Possibly, yes, I'm sure it could have, but you know, it is what it is. What I should have done was practice, and here is a great exercise that you can do in order to probably get better at this or warm up, something I definitely think I should have done. So this is 3 16 These are coupons, aluminum coupons from wildmetalsonline.com. This is 032 or 20 gauge aluminum, depending on how you want to scale it, right? So when you do the math on it, this is six times thicker than this one is. So we can lay this out in a couple of different orientations and practice exactly you know, how, to, how to run this exercise. And the two that I have in mind, the first is a lab joint and the other one is a fillet. So Let's get this torn up and set up. So my machine has been turned back up to 130 amps and uh, I decided to go with 120 hertz. That just seems to be where I'm feeling today as opposed to last week, I could rock and roll at 90. But on this one, I want it a little bit tighter and give me a little bit more time to, uh, to control it. This tack wire that I'm using here is 045 tacking wire or it's, it's 045 filler wire, straight cut. Uh, that's also available at Weld Metals. I do still have some 1 16th over here and I've got 3 32nd over here. I know that we're going to need the 3 32nd because we're going to have to keep it tight, high deposition for better cooling on it and we're going to have to move pretty quick. So the 3 32nd is not going to need to be pushed into the weld pool to build it up. Whereas the uh, 1 16th, we'd have to stuff a lot in there and it would slow us down and it would get a lot hotter. So we'll start with our tack weld. So the same rules as before, we're going to focus in on the upper coupon, the thicker coupon. We're going to let it build a weld pool there and then we'll just kind of slowly direct the arc downward until it kind of bleeds some of that heat off into getting the 20 gauge or the 032 to pool up a little bit. And as soon as I have that nice and steady and stable, I'm going to keep the arc super tight on that part, drop a little bit of this 045 filler in because it takes almost nothing to melt this together, so, or to melt this into a pool. So here we go. We're lit, moving down a little bit, tiny drop, bleed. There we go, there's one, there's number two, same thing, keep it tight, little drop, there we go. That wasn't so bad. Okay, 330 second filler. I'm going to keep this arc nice and tight, more focused on the upper coupon, move along as quick as possible. I am going to keep the, uh, the dabs pretty tight and consistent, right? I don't want to spend a lot of time on there. I want the 332nd to continuously fill. So the trickiest part here is to get it to initially build. And once you have it, it's built up, all you got to do is maintain it at that point. Making sure that my focus stays on the upper. really trying to concentrate here. I am almost full throttle on this, so we're definitely over 100 amps. As I'm coming up to the end here, I'm backing off a little bit. 
a little extra filler, swoop it back. There we go. Now, fun fact, pliers are for handling hot metal, not gloves. That's how you make your gloves last a lot longer. Oh, this doesn't look too bad at all. It's not perfect. It's not the worst, but it'll do. Okay, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get you an arc shot on this one, but the same rule still applies. The reason why is it's way too tight to get in there. So again, we're going to focus in on the thicker one, let the pool build onto it, and then slowly direct it downward until I get a pool on the thinner material. We're going to drop some of this 045 filler into it. Believe me when I say it's not easy, but with enough practice, you'll get it. There we go. Not too bad. Now, I'm going to point out this copper block here. It is uh, not being used as a heat sink. It's being used as a weight because this, uh, this is a 321 block from Wild Metals Online. It's solid copper. It weighs almost two pounds. Hard to believe being so small, but uh, it'll weigh this coupon down. I'm not, being, I'm not using it as a heat sink, right? We're not cheating, if you will. Uh, so it's just there so that way I don't poke the part and move it around. That way I can keep the camera still while I'm doing the arc shot here. So same rule as before. We're going to start with our focus on the lower or the thicker piece. Kind of move it in. The hard part's getting that first dab. And here we're just moving right along. You can see most of my focus is on the lower coupon or the thicker one. I am keeping it really tight. Try not to get it too hot. Got to move quickly and get enough filler in there. I'm probably, I can't see the machine obviously, but I know I'm north of 100 amps except for here where I'm coming to the end. We're backing up quite a bit. Don't want to blow that edge out. So leave this filler in here. Back it up. There we go. Not too shabby. Not too bad at all. Not the best, but certainly not the worst. Okay. I hope this information helps you out just a little bit. And this exercise, you know, it's one that you can definitely do. I willingly admit I should have probably practiced this before I tackled that tank. It probably would have come out a little bit cleaner, but I'm not overly worried about it. Things watertight, we're good to go. Now, I'm gonna level with you because I like doing that. This is the result that you guys saw. And yes, of course, I did do that. And it is correct and it was on camera, but this is how many tries it took me to get it just right, okay? It's not easy, it takes time. And even though I've been welding for 22 years, you know, I still struggle with stuff like this. I haven't actually done this type of exercise in over a year. You know, it, it takes a minute to get used to, or it takes a minute to come back to you. But luckily we here at Weld Coach are here just for that reason. You can book a class with an instructor one-on-one -on -one, right there and wherever you're at and ask them to walk you through this. We'll get you going through it. Simple as that.